Hey, welcome back to the More in Common podcast, Elizabeth Miles, part two. If you haven't had a chance to check out part one yet, I definitely suggest you do so. You get some context out of this conversation. And, uh, you know, Rodney mentioned episode 40 with Tristan Coopersmith, another good one that, that reminds us of this conversation. And if you like it, share it, love it, like us, subscribe, give us a review, tell us what we're doing well, what we could do better, and hey, we, we love it all. So on to this part two. Speaking on, on this line of big pivots versus little pivots and your moment, um, you were married for 20 years, I believe, um, at the time. Right. And. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you did homework. And, <laughs> <laughs> or did I say that already? I don't even know. No, no, no. he does homework. You're married for He's the homework years. guy. And you were at this campsite and you heard the voice, it's time to pivot. What were, and then you said six months. So w- your life changed at that point. So up until that six months, what were those, what did you act on when you heard it was time to pivot because obviously it didn't it didn't just jump to big decisions right so what were some of those little decisions and what were those big decisions um as it as it culminated um i mean i knew so the next day after i heard that voice you know i'm climbing a mountain we were supposed to be hiking i was like what do you i I get to a sign in this park that says you know danger people have been known to die doing this hike and i'm like what the heck did you take me to like where are we i don't want to do this and i kept giving myself a million and one excuses why i shouldn't um you know, think everything from I'm out of shape and, and, you know, really talking badly about myself to, oh my God, look, that dog can hike this mountain better than I can. Clearly I shouldn't be here. I'm going to die. Like I was so stuck in fear that as the higher we got on this mountain, I realized like I, I have a choice to make. I can either sit in this fear and, and spin out in my mind and likely die, quite frankly, um, or I can pivot in this moment and find something else to focus on besides how scared I am and all the judgment and the reasons I'm telling myself I shouldn't be here. And hey, I can enjoy this experience. Um, <clears throat> that for me was like a huge right there, a breakthrough, because once I could make that mindset shift, um, the entire experience changed, uh, and I could breathe. First of all, after that, within six months, I was able to make the change to, to actually see from a different perspective, even though it was the same situation, what was actually happening in that marriage. Um, I was able to see how my boundaries were violated. I was able to actually accept the fact that, um, this was not okay. The situation that I was in, um, it it was not okay. It wasn't acceptable, uh, for me, for my family, for who I wanted to be. And, you know, being, getting to a point, it still took six months for me to get out, but that was a huge pivot for me. At that point, I made the decision also to switch gears. Um, that's where I started writing. Uh, that's where I started, you know, wanting to dive in and learning more about the power that t- to pivot mindset coaching, um, because I knew there was a bigger message here that I wanted to share. Um, that was a huge pivot for me. Um, I feel like how I looked at the world, how I parented, everything about my life changed in that moment. And then the day after. What did you shift your mind to in that, like when you had that moment and you were like, I can keep going, is it going to be bad? Or I can focus on like, what did you focus on in that moment? Do you, do you remember? Oh, um, a lot of things. I, I prayed a lot. Um, 
I sang to myself, like I would random like Disney songs, like would pop into my head. Like I started thinking about things that made me happy. Uh, that made a huge difference. My kids, um, how beautiful this park was. Like I was in the middle of a gorgeous park. Yeah. I was on a mountain that was like really high up and scary on this narrow cliff that, yeah, I could have fallen and gotten really hurt. And, but when I looked up and saw the sky and the trees and it was early April and it was this beautiful scenery, I was missing it. And I had, once I focused on that, I was like, Oh, look, like, you know, I could notice, I could hear the birds. I could, I could appreciate the surrounding. We were trying to get to a waterfall, but if I was so stuck in my head, I never would have made it. And it was this beautiful, beautiful waterfall. Um, you know, there were those, I don't remember what they're called, but they're the, like the rock formations. Um, it, they were all over the place. It, it was just beautiful. And if I focused on that, I could get out of my head. And then I had a greater appreciation for where I was um, and could also feel into the experience. It was a very physical experience, but I was also able to appreciate the the work that my body was doing and be proud of that. Whereas if I'm sitting here going, I'm not in shape for this. I can't do this. I'm not appreciating the fact that I'm doing the work. Um, and it, it's like a different place. So one of the things, and I don't know how much of your 20 years that you share, right up to that point, but when it comes to that pivot moment, so many people feel trapped, lost. And um, what was, what did that 20 years look like for you? And how do you look back on it? Um, it was 20 years of infidelity, lies, um, mental abuse, manipulation. Um, there were a lot of arguments that resulted in being told you're wrong and you can't prove that you're right. So you must be wrong. And I'm sitting there going, but I know I'm right. Like that, that intuitive, like something's not right. Spidey sense just kept popping up and I kept ignoring it and ignoring it and hoping, hoping I could change him when really I needed to look at me. Um, because 20 years, the proof was there. He wasn't going to change what he was doing. I needed to do something different. I needed to get to a point where I could accept the fact that I don't know what's going to happen when I make this change. Cause up to that point, I, I kept telling myself, I have kids, I'll be a single mom. How am I going to survive? What am I going to do? I kept giving myself reasons to not be okay making that decision that I knew was the right choice to make. Um, and I, it was just one excuse after another that I was giving myself because I was afraid. But at the same time, the more this happened, the longer it went on, it, it was, I kept sinking lower and lower. Like mentally, I was not in a good place. Um, I struggled with, you know, depression. Um, it, it was, I was not okay. Um, and I, I felt trapped. I was so confused. I, it's easy to lose sight of like, who the heck am I? Like, this is not what I believe. I don't think this is right. If I was looking, if I was outside looking into this, what would I tell my friend? But I wasn't following that advice. Um, so I had to kind of give myself like a reality check, like, you would not want this for the people that you love. Why do you, are you okay with this for you? And it's funny what happened after that, because uh, I remember sitting in the library one night. I had, I had to go to the library. I don't know why. I love to read, but like for me to go, I'm going to a library on a Wednesday night was out of the ordinary for me. Um, 
And I was walking through the stacks. I'm like, I have no idea why I'm here. Okay, universe, I'm here. And I look on the shelf and there's this book that just kind of called to me and it didn't belong in that section. It was very much out of like, very much out of where it needed to be, but it was their calling and I picked it up and it was all about um, like, uh, like narcissistic abuse. And like, I opened it and as I'm starting to read, it was like my life sitting in this book, like all the situations, all the, the mental mind twists like were there. And I'm, I was sitting in the back of the library. I was crying my eyes out and I was like, all right, universe, well played. Um, I get it, but now what do I do? And it was right after, so this was, we were on the mountain in April. This was probably in August, early August. I was scheduled to give my first talk probably two weeks later. And at the, um, the conference that we were at, I happened to meet a woman who was a psych psychologist. And I swear this woman saved my life. Um, because there were some things that had happened probably two weeks after that, that I was able to call her and she was like, this is what you need to do. And you need to understand this isn't okay. Like you're not seeing this wrong. This isn't okay. And, you know, she literally held my hand through the process, which is what I needed. Up to that point, we had been through family therapy. We had been to marriage counseling. Like we were doing the things and not a single person said to me, it's okay if you leave. Not a single one. And honestly, I kept justifying, like, I got to make this work for my family. I got to make this work for my kids. But not a single person said to me, are you okay? Um, it's okay. You don't have to do this. You know, he's not showing up for counseling. What does that tell you? It was always, well, we'll work it out next time. Or, you know, there was never, it's funny because about a year and a half after, well, I forget the timeline after, but one of my kids' teachers, I, I saw them like randomly. And she said to me, you never looked okay before when you were with him and I, and you're glowing now and I'm super happy for you. And I was like, well, yeah, that's great. I'm happy. Things are going well, but not a single person interceded. Did, did, um, sorry to interject a quick no, question. Okay. Did, I wonder if they, did they notice it now because you're glowing or did they notice it that like, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to say like, sometimes you, you, you notice you intuit a thing, but you can't probably like something's off here, but I don't. And then it's like, Oh, like you're, yeah, you, this is you. Yeah. That was not you. I wonder if that was the case for anybody, but maybe, I mean, I don't know. It's frustrating when I look back and I'm like, we were at so many therapists and not a single person ever That's was true. like, you know, it's okay. You, you don't have to you. do this. Yeah. And this woman completely saved my life. Like I, without, and I, we stayed in touch briefly. I don't know what happened after she followed up with me. And then we kind of, she, she was like my guardian angel for a little while. And I'm super grateful. Um, but yeah, I don't know how I got to talk about this. So I'm sorry if I dive took a deep dive away from your question. No, this is good. No, <laughs> I mean, we're following. This is what yeah, Keith does. No. It's, it's right onto the couch. People go, okay, um, cool. no, it's no, thank you for sharing. I mean, it's, it's hard. And so timing, when did you pick up that book after, at what point did the book come around versus or relative to the pivot moment? So we were on the mountain in April the book popped up in August and then everything changed. So September, Oh, like within a month, it was like the end. Cause you said it was like four. So it was like four months after. Cause you said it was like six months before five or six months before you made an actual, yeah. How long was it that you had been feeling justifying 
basically arguing your intuition um, prior to that pivot moment. 20 years. Yeah, from the day, from the day it started, huh? So the, the behavior was there before we were even married. I justified it. I had called off the wedding and then justified going back because I was like, you actually, yeah. 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 So that infidelity was there. And I was like, well, he said he was sorry and we're going to work on it. And it's okay. Like, I just kept telling myself all these things and I'm not saying people can't change. That's like the furthest thing, but I knew. And then it happened again. And then it happened again. And I kept getting stuck in looking for the pattern of what I did wrong to cause it. Um, I kept getting stuck in trying to change it, um, trying to fix the marriage. Like I was like circling and circling around and never really thought about the fact that it was okay for me to go, this isn't for me. Like, although there were times I said to him, like, if you, like, if you want that, that type of relationship, like that it's open and, you know, great. Like that's not for me. So I'm going to, I'm going to not be able to do that. Like if you want an open relationship like that, then you really need to find somebody else. And he kept going, no, I want to be with you. I can change. This isn't how I want to be. I don't want to lie to you. I don't want to, but he kept doing it. Um, you know, I, I said many times, like, I'd much rather you just tell me you don't love me. I'd much rather you just be open with me and let me make a decision for myself. And he just kept saying, no, I love you. I want to be with you. So it. What would you tell yourself, tell your younger self, knowing what you know now? Listen to yourself. Trust your intuition. Um, I was right every time, every single time that my spidey sense was like, Ooh, we got a problem. Like I just knew. And you know, that was the other thing too. Cause I got stuck in like, why do I know? Like I became like a body language expert because I'm like, what, what is different now? I was trying to like scientifically prove my intuition, which doesn't really you know, you could, you can try, but like, um, that was a distraction for me. And, um, yeah, I would definitely go back and tell myself, like, you just need to listen. It's okay for you to not want to do this. You know, you don't just listen. Would you say, would you say in those moments where you're, where you're like, just tell me you don't love me or let me, so I can make my own decision. Would you say that you were, would you say that you were handing that decision to him versus making it yourself? Oh yeah. It was easier for me to go, you tell me that you don't love me versus me going, this isn't, for, this isn't okay. I'm like, not I, feeling yeah, loved. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, I don't want to do this. Yeah, Absolutely. Where, so I'm, I'm curious, like, what was it like for you growing up? Oh, we're going there. Um, (laughs) (laughs) You can avoid it. (laughs) uh, Well, I was the middle of three kids. So middle child. Um, Uh I have two brothers and one is we're close in age. One is like way, like we're very far apart. Um, when I look at it now, I can kind of see like the parallels in my relationship versus my parents. Mm. Um, I'm not blaming my parents just for the record, but I can see those parallels. Um, you know, growing up for me was, um, I was bullied a lot. Oh, bad, bad, bad. Um, I struggled for a long time to find my place. Um, Trying to figure out who I am and thinking and feeling like I had to yield to other people and 
if they didn't approve of who I was, that I was the problem. You were wrong, not um, them. Yeah. yeah, that was kind of the framework that I grew up with. And I, I still struggle with that, you know, not feeling like I'm okay. And if I don't have that approval, but I think it's easier for me now to go, well, oh, well, <laughs> like too bad. So sad. Like I'm going to do me. And, um, you know, I'm always looking to improve. Like I'm always, I, I don't, I don't want to stay stuck and complacent with, with me. I, you know, it goes back to that. We're always evolving, but at the same time, I think open-mindedness has kind of taken a new perspective for me compared to what I would have told you 20 years ago, you know, about being open to feedback. And, and there's a difference between feedback and criticism and finding that line between this is not a person that like their opinion of who you are, that's, that's them, (laughs) you know, they're filtering it. Um, and if they, and this goes for everybody, like if they can't, like we can accept other people. Uh, I, well, I'll say this. I think we need to respect everybody. We're all people on the planet. I don't care where you live, uh, religion, you know, race, we're all people. And that alone is, you know, enough to yield respect for every person that's alive. You don't have to be besties with them, but respect them, you know? So it's, um, so the reason I asked that question without, I won't call out all the parallels of everything that you said, cause I'm sure you felt them and you've, you've gone through them plenty of times, but now you are where you are. Like you, you worked through, bullying and feeling like you need everybody's approval and then that leading to an abusive marriage and that leading to 20 years. What does it look like for you today when you wake up? And obviously we all battle with insecurities and other things, but like versus the long trajectory leading up to this point. So I approach my day every day very differently than I did 20 years ago. Um, You know, for me, it's about forward focus. It's about what feels good. Um, It's funny because, you know, throughout probably, you know, two to three years, I don't even know how far before um, the pivot, but I started to understand like, energy and and it opened me up to kind of spirituality and and the universe. And um, that kind of got me back to my intuition. It was always there as a kid, but like I turned it off. I was like, no, you're wrong. Like I I always kind of had the the sense of things. I, I can say now I know when my intuition is talking to me, Um, I can hear it. And I have an appreciation for that. And I'm not afraid of it. Uh, even when it's telling me to do the scary stuff um, or it doesn't make sense because it never does. Your intuition is never, usually never tells you like this linear move. It's always like this side jump around what you think is going to make sense. But, you know, when I wake up in the morning, I approach the day with gratitude and appreciation and there's a presence like this mindful awareness for where I am in the moment. And it's not always the case. Like I have those days where I'm like thinking about a million and one other things um, that, that to-do list gets really long, really fast when you go there. Um, And, you know, trying not to look back with regret. I don't, I, as much as it was 20 years of a nightmare, I can't look back and be, I, well, I guess there's the choice, right? I could look back and think I'm a victim. I'm, you know, look at the time I lost. And there were points where I did, like there was, there were periods where I was like, well, you know, I just wasted 20 years of my life. What the heck am I going to do now? And, but no, like I can learn from it. 
Um, I'm grateful because of all that it taught me about the world, about myself, about what I was capable of. And I approach days like that, you know, gratitude, appreciation, bringing myself back to right now, being grateful for all that is going right, um, and asking, you know, what's the lesson in the things that I don't perceive as going correctly? You know, it's not about me. Like, I'm here for a purpose. Um, what And what lessons do I need to learn to move me towards that? Do you have any idea where you didn't lose your intuition, but stop listening to it? Like, at what point in your life? The, do you remember having it and then remember the period where? It- I remember as a kid, I remember being like eight years old and I'd be like, oh, I'm going to get mail this week or like, like really stupid, like not stupid, but like these little, they seem insignificant or like, I just knew things were going to happen. Um, or feeling like, um, things weren't okay. And then I remember there being a point, I want to say probably like nine years old between like nine and 18, 19, where I was, I, I was just kind of there. Like, I don't remember intuitive hits. Um, I can say that that intuition was off. I wasn't listening. Uh, and then I, I was aware of that feeling of my intuition when I met him, but couldn't, it's not like I could identify it as, well, that's your intuition, dummy. Like, you're telling yourself you don't want this. Um, like I, there's a, like a mind body connection there and I, I didn't understand it. Uh, so I, I could not even identify it. I just knew I didn't feel right about it. So how long ago was that when you um, en- ended that relationship? Uh, September of 2019. Wow. So almost exactly two years. And in now, when did you start your bakery? Uh, September of 2016. Okay. You've had, you've had a bakery. You've written a book. Three. You have your own podcast. (laughs) Three books. Yeah. Yeah. You have your own podcast. You coach. You help independent creators. You've created this media company. Like, how long have you been building this ecosystem? Um, oh gosh. Um, March 4th media. When did that come about? 2020 recently, because again, making those little shifts and those pivots, like unfolding into the message that I'm, I want to share. Um, it's taken time to get there. So a while, but not really at the same time. Like, as I look back and I'm like, what I often ask myself, like, what, what was the bakery about? Right. I always wanted to build this community space, healing through food, food brings everybody together. Um, I did that with the bakery. Like I'm very proud of the work that we did there. Um, and the community that we built with, the podcast and March 4th media, it's, it's about, um, sharing your stories. I very strongly feel like we can heal together. We can build community together. Our stories don't have to be the same, but we, but there's going to be overlap and similarities most likely. And if we sit and we listen, we understand we can heal together. We grow together. We are only, uh, we can only get stronger when we come together. And that's, that's the, the fuel with March 4th media is, you know, we can create positive change by sitting down and listening, sharing stories, having those conversations and learning from one another. Um, so it's, it's taken some time, but like I said, like, I, I honestly don't remember when March 4th media came about, but it's not, it has not been that long. And yet at the same time, it's taken a while to build. Well, and back to the earlier thought, like everything's brought you to this. So 
things have been happening all along that have, have become this, but that's, um, that's pretty and, cool. And how is like, what's the progress been, especially in the last two years? Slow. Um, because, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Like, you know, still healing through things, um, getting comfortable with me now. And, you know, it takes time to come to acceptance. Uh, so I feel like a lot is to come and I'm super excited about it. But at the same time, while 20 years ago that overachiever in me would have been like, we're doing this and we're building it and it'll be built in a month. And there's still that part of me that's like, we're going to go, go, go. And we're going to build. I, I have a much greater appreciation for my own energy and trying to avoid burnout and making sure that I take the time to do the things that fuel me and spending time with my family and like really making those shifts so that I can build the best possible company or, you know, for what I want to do. And if it takes me a little bit longer to get there, but the pieces fall into place, I'm okay with that. That answered the question I was going to ask. I was, I was going to ask how you manage that space of it is what it is. It's not going very fast, but I see big things. You just, you just answered that. So. I mean, when I started the podcast, I mean, and maybe for you guys, it was the same way. You're like, I want like a million hits tomorrow. Um, and I remember like now I think, I think we're at, I'm at like 2000 downloads or something like that. I don't even know. It's, but it's grown over time. And I can look back and remember the moment where I was like, who the heck's going to listen to this? You know, but there are people that do. And, you know, we're almost at a hundred episodes now. And I'm like, holy crap, like that's a hundred interviews. Like, whoa, like I think about it. And I think of all the stories that have come out and, you know, the great people that I've had a chance to meet. And it, it goes back to that incremental progress. But like, if I have to take a little bit more time, I took the summer off, um, you know, to take care of other things. Like, I think it's okay to sit in that space of it's okay to take a little bit longer um, to make sure you're taken care of. And I think as entrepreneurs, it's really hard to remember that because you're taking on such a huge risk of being an entrepreneur and you're like, well, the financial risk and the money, the money, like I got to feed myself. I got to feed my family. And yes, you do. But you can tackle problems better when you take that time to slow down a little bit. That was a lesson that took me a really long time to learn. Yeah. We, uh, Still learning it. Yeah, we, <laughs> we've, we've, we've been talking about this all year and, you know, we hit those different, you talk about the universe and energy and those different periods of time where you're more reflective and you're more action oriented and really leaning into that. So we're not, like in February, I just, I can't function at a high level. Um, December, I'm far more reflective. And if I don't spend time on thinking about the business and, and I'm just sitting here grinding away, it just, you burn out and it's, and it's such a, uh, totally 100% with you. So now I have to, cause we're coming up on time and we have one final question, but before we ask that, where can people find you and what, like we read this in the bio, but from your words, you do a few things. What can they find you to do? Oh, so I work with independent creatives. So authors, artists, healers, um, with brand development. Um, if you're looking to write a book, um, you know, however I can help you share your story. I'm here to help you do that. Um, you know, you can find me, the Power to Pivot podcast is on all major podcast platforms. You can find me on Instagram. So there's the author me and the March 4th Media me. Uh, you can find me on either. Um, so at March 4th Media Co. or at Elizabeth A. Miles on Instagram, uh, Facebook. The website's March 4th Media Company.com. 
Uh, you can always uh, email. Uh, we have the blog there too. So there's some other great stories there. You can email me through the blog. That'd be great too. And I'm, I'm always, I love to hear stories from other people who are making that choice to pivot. Um, and I love sharing those stories. That's really what I'm here to do is to help you share your story. Well, thank you for sharing your story with us. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and thank a very, you for stepping on the couch. Yeah, yeah thank just, uh, you. I appreciate this opportunity. This was fun. Like a, a, a raw but beautiful and just open ways. Thank you. Um, some good stuff. Some good. I, I took a lot of good stuff away. So yeah, seriously. Uh, hopefully, somebody else will. Um, you already kind of answered part of the last question. You, you you're just like heading all my questions off at the pass. But uh, the final question is, uh, what does compassion mean to you? Oh. Um, not making it about you. It's about understanding, meeting people where they are in that moment. Uh, and it's about peace.